Lyo Convoy here. There's been a few reboots in recent years that have created some extremely negative reactions in online communities, such as the new she Thundercats, or Rise of the Ninja Turtles. How do they happen, though? Let's talk about that. First and foremost, there's the corporations that hold these licenses and copyrights. They want to continue their properties in order to make profits on them. That one's obvious. What's changed, though, is how they do it. In times past, they would accept original outside pitches from creative talents. This isn't the case in the modern day, though. Now, they do it all internally. This is actually how the new She-Ra cartoon came about. DreamWorks approached Noelle Stevenson and asked her to develop her own She-Ra cartoon. There are those that say she hijacked it or stole it, but both those statements would require, well, theft. She didn't steal this property. She was literally handed it. Now, I personally don't think it's a good She-Ra cartoon. I mean, it's an okay show, it's just not She-Ra. There are those that will go on at length about these things, but we'll get to them soon enough. Corporations aren't led by creative talent anymore. They're led by focus groups and number crunchers. The less spent for the highest return is the golden rule there. Taking risks is uncommon for legacy properties, more so for the lesser 80s cartoons. And while internal promotion is great if you're working in a place like a plant or a factory, external ideas are a good thing to cultivate when you're talking about storytelling or animation. Speaking of storytelling and animation, though, let's talk about the animation industry itself and the part it plays. In the 80s, it was shown how lucrative toys made to push products could be. So there were a lot that came out for syndication. Over 100 cartoons for syndication in the 80s alone, if you want a more accurate number. But those of you who lived through the 90s likely remember cartoons petering off in quality and number around the mid-90s. This is due to the government passing legislation concerning the content of cartoons. There's an entire video by Grunge that covers all of this in detail that you can click on in the description after this video. But due to this interference, cartoons became less profitable, and as such, less money was put into them. This means less detail, lower frame rates, etc. The long and short of it is that there's not as much money in animation anymore, at least not TV animation, and the cartoons funded by toy sales model has never been properly readdressed. This is why shows of high quality like Avatar The Last Airbender are so rare. No one wants to take the financial risk of making them, only to have them fail. But now we're going to talk about the final group to blame. Us. The fans. I'm not new to reboots or continuations of shows. As previously stated in other videos, I'm a Transformer fan. Ask any Transformer fan over the age of 30 what truck not monkey means, and you'll get an entire history lesson on it. Hearing that phrase triggers some freaking Vietnam flashbacks for me, man. They took his legs, Scott. They took his legs. What I'm getting at is that this has been a recurring theme throughout Transformers dating back to at least Beast Wars and forward. Heck, the TF Wiki has an entire page called Ruined Forever, where it brings up the fandom's visceral reactions to several Transformer reboots. The outrage isn't a new phenomenon. What is newer, though, is the outrage culture being a lucrative way of getting views and revenue. And here's where it all comes into play. I feel the best example of my point here is a YouTube channel called Clownfish TV. Run by Kneon and Geeky Sparkles, Clownfish TV started in 2016 as more of a gaming channel. It soon after that started covering whatever nerd entertainment media they could push for clickbait and views. You can see that by the views their gaming content used to make versus what their content makes now. Before I go any further, I've interacted with Kneon a few times on Twitter. He doesn't seem to be a bad guy overall, but his channel has a lot of issues and it feeds into this tidal wave of nonsense. I have no problem with stating negative things. Heck, anyone who's watched this channel knows I value negativity when it's in its proper place. But this is a bit too far. What do I mean? Well, how many videos do you expect a channel to do on a show they hate? Maybe one or two, right? I said offhandedly to friends a while ago that Clownfish has done like 16 videos on how much they hate the new She-Ra. For this video, I decided to get an accurate count, thinking I likely wasn't far off the mark by one or two. I was, though. Goodness was I off the mark. Because they've done a total of 63 videos in the last year about She-Ra. 63. 
totaling them up and cutting some of the length to compensate for the other topics they may cover in the same videos, that totals up to 42 hours of them complaining about the same show. Let's compare that to the show itself, which has currently 26 episodes for a runtime of only 10 hours. The complaints Clownfish has made about this show is over three times the runtime of the show itself. And that's not even taken into account that they said almost a year ago that they're done with it. The Bible talks about a dog returning to its vomit, and I think that metaphor works well here. They also talk about Thundercat's roar, a total of seven videos. And that leads me to another issue here. 90% of what they talk about is ludicrous speculation based on literally nothing. They often make comments so far off base that you wonder where they got it from. Any plans to include Prince Adam of Eternia? He-Man is not really on the table for this iteration of She-Ra at all, she says. Thank God. The character, I love this. The character poses a challenge for her, for her, her modern interpretation of She-Ra's universe. Okay, so it poses a challenge for her to interpret him because I think a couple reasons. I'll let you go with your reason in a minute. But I think yeah. part of it is there's a lot more He-Man fans than there are She-Ra fans. And if you dick with He-Man too much, then they're going to come da- they're going to come down on you hard. Yeah. But beyond that, go ahead. Uh, I think I can tell you. I think that the issue with He-Man is that um, Stevenson and her uh, fellow Tumblrites would find He-Man incredibly problematic. He is a symbol of toxic masculinity. He is a six and a half foot tall uh, white blonde dude. Um, and he lifts his large sword over his head and says, I have the power. Yeah, we can't have that. They would find that incredibly problematic. Yeah, because their version would make him some weakling little puss who has no power and understands that she was better than him. Yeah. Because, you know, he has to be an ally, like all the male characters in the new She-Ra. See what I'm talking about here? Where do they even get that from? That's not logical, reasonable, or even constructive criticism. It has no source, no point of merit. It's conspiracy theory nonsense, which we will also cover later. My final issue is the runtime. Take this for example. We didn't need 16 minutes of video to explain what happened here. You could have literally just reached out to James Etock or Dusan Mitrovic. They were the people who were doing the Return of Faker episode. But I guess that would be doing actual research. Much easier to put out nonsense based on nothing that goons will eat up. Right? Am I being too harsh on Clownfish TV? Absolutely not. These people are my age, and I expect better of them. All this talk about how they love these older shows, but they never talk about them, because that takes effort. They complain about corporations not doing what they want due to being cheap, all while they're being lazy themselves. I'm pointing out clownfish here because they're sitting right at everything that's wrong here with how we react to these things. Clownfish TV, I know you're going to see this, so let me be clear here. I have seen more about the new She-Ra from you than I have any marketing from its parent company, DreamWorks. You, and by extension, anyone else that puts out this type of outrage is actively giving these shows more attention. I did one video on my thoughts on Thundercats Roar as a whole, with one other addressing how we should respond and another addressing Movie Bob and I've actively made it a point to not do further videos on that topic because I will not reward it with publicity. And this isn't just about Clownfish TV. Nerd culture as a whole has a bad habit of doing this. Any video search for reviews of things like Teen Titans Go will show you that. But here's the thing specifically with Thundercats and She-Ra. Several of you have no right to talk about it. And yes, I mean that more metaphorically than physically, as I'm sure some goon in the comments will miss that if I don't say it. Why would I say that, though? Well, here's why. This is the new 52 He-Man and Masters of the Universe. It started in 2012 by DC. Alongside it is the Wildstorm Thundercats The Return, which came out in 2002. I've seen so many of you complaining about how these new shows don't do justice to the original properties, or it shames them. So I have to ask... Where were you? The new 52 He-Man turns She-Ra into a literal murderer who doesn't turn against Hordak because she becomes aware he's actually evil, but does so because he lied to her. And the 2002 
Thundercats Return series has been Golly killed and Chitara raped. Yet I alone was Isaiah crying into the wilderness about these when they were released. Many of you, though, at that time praised them for being mature or daring, all while not knowing what either of those two words mean. And now, because these properties aren't changed in an edgy way, you now want to cry? Spare me your false outrage. You guys even had a chance to do so in both the He-Man Thundercats crossover and the He-Man Injustice crossover. And what did I hear from all of you? Silence. And the He-Man crossover with Injustice was just last year. You don't actually care about these properties. You just want something to do clickbaity videos about. But don't worry. I'll pick up the slack for you and do it instead because you're too weak. Now, someone will likely claim that I'm leaving out context to the things I mentioned in these stories. But here's the thing. They're child properties. The context does not matter here because there should be no story where She-Ra is a murderer and no story where Chitara gets raped. Are you even paying attention? Newsflash, people. The new She-Ra is closer to the original Adora's origin than the new 52 comics were. That's an objective fact. And for those of you who keep decrying the fact that the 2011 Thundercat series was canceled and not picked up and how it was a better successor, when you look at that series, and I'm sorry, there are some of you who follow me who are very fond of this, but I need to say this. When you compare it to the original, it wears the shirt of Thundercats while not having the body for it. It's done by the same people who did the return. It is not what Thundercats was supposed to be about. They turned the heroic good characters into literal racists. So spare me your outrage while trying to pimp that up as though it's an example of a good reboot. One step further into how we've all responded to these things, though, there are many that complain these industries have been taken over by political radicals or other people that don't like these properties. So I have to ask myself, where were you? None of these people complaining here, myself included, chose to go into these industries out of a love for these properties. I didn't due to the need to survive, overriding the desire to chase a dream. But I'm actively trying to correct that by a look at all these outrage channels talking about cartoons, comics, or anything else. Few of them actually tried to change this internally or cared enough to try. Instead, they just scream into a microphone about it. You want to voice your concerns about a bad reboot? Don't do 63 freaking videos about it. Write to the property owners instead of doing hot takes on Twitter. And try to get into the industry itself. Drown them out in silence instead of doing their marketing for them via outrage. I'm sure this video is going to irritate some people. But I'm willing to argue with any of you. Bring it. You cannot continue to allow your baser instincts to play into this. And if you do, you are a fool. Special thanks to Avis, Hateful Tate, Harry Partridge, Norden, Busy Robot Hands, and Riddle of Lightning for supporting me on Patreon. If you want to support more of my madness, the link is in the description. I know this was a hot and heavy video, but I don't apologize for any of it. This is Lyle Convoy, and I wish you well.